Welcome back, everyone, to hour number two of Middays with Q. Rich Canyon is here. And as always, we appreciate you guys tuning us in. Uh, don't forget to download the Sports Radio 1029 FM, the game, Southwest Florida's newest game in town, the app. Uh, feedback has been wonderful. As always, like, comment, sub, and subscribe to the channel, Rich Q on Q, and check out the new site, uh, SR1029, uh, the game. So with that being said, we welcome in our good friend Nick Costco at Nick Costco 59 college sports on three sports. Are you wrestling? Does great with the um, play by play and of course Cal live sports in our backyard uh, up and down the I guess you can say the Jersey shore points if you will. But uh, Nick always good to uh, touch base with you. I know we're kind of in the dog days of summer, but we blink man college football is going to be right here. Yeah, you look at two months from now, we're going to really hit it pretty you know hit it pretty strong with you know fall camps and yep. obviously NFL training camps going to be around the corner as well so you know it's it's slow now and the transfer portal obviously is closed uh, i know from my perspective the college wrestling stuff seemingly never stops now with all these uh, co- all this coaching movement and these uh you know transfer portal still open for some schools as well but yeah college football is going to be just around the corner, we're already in that season of like, oh, well, we'll, we'll project the uh, win and loss total of this team, that team, and how's the conference, how the conferences are shaking out. So it's still an exciting time, but yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna get through our, our beach days first for sure. Yeah, a couple of teams I want to um, pinpoint and and dive into for a couple moments with you today, and we'll do a lot more prior to the season. But I look at right now, if we were to have you know your Costco top five, top ten, when you look at Ohio State, uh, you've got arguably one of the best defenses. In the nation, they can get to the quarterback. We know about their weapons. We know about their offense. We know about the wide receivers. We know about the running backs. With that being said, can you look at Ohio State right now as presently constructed and sit there and say preseason number one going into the season? Uh, I wouldn't say that's the overwhelming opinion. I think you still have to go between them and Georgia. But Mm -hmm. if you gave me the argument for Ohio State, I'm not going to tell you you're crazy because what we've seen from Ohio State, they bring in a new quarterback, Will Howard. After Kyle McCord last year started, went to the portal. He goes to Syracuse, which was obviously a surprising move at the time. But Will Howard's in there. I think the biggest thing you look at is, you know, in addition to all the other transfers they got, and you can't, I mean, I, I don't want to forget about Caleb Downs, the star yeah. freshman defensive back from Alabama last year. He goes to Ohio State. He's going to instantly improve that secondary. But you really can't talk about Ohio State going to 2024 without mentioning Chip Kelly and what he can bring to that offense with Ryan Day again. Ryan Day was his former protege. And now Day's in charge of him technically, but Chip Kelly's going to kind of run with the offense and they're going to mesh ideas together. And I think if with Chip Kelly just running strictly the offense and talking and coaching strictly football, not dealing with the, you know, the quote unquote GM responsibilities of a college football head coach with the portal and the NIL and the boosters and, you know, the media for the most part, I think they're going to be a little bit more focused and they certainly look like on paper that they're going to have the best offense in yeah. the in the Big Ten as well as maybe the best overall team in the Big Ten. But I would still say Georgia's probably your number one. But if you told me Ohio State was your preseason number one at this point in June, I'd be like, okay, that's totally fine. They're usually going to be the top two teams, I would say, going into September. But uh, you, so you really can't go on with either way. Yeah, plus they got the kid from Ole Miss that rushed for Watt. Uh, I put up 1,200 yards, uh, close 16 touchdowns. A kid, uh, yeah, uh, Quinn Shot Junkins. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Last night. So, um, last year, pardon me. So, yeah, he's, I mean, they've got a wealth and a, uh, a ton of depth and a wealth of talent. And then, um, you know, you talk about Ohio State and obviously their rival, Michigan. Now, I'm mm-hmm. just wondering, we know with the loss of Harbaugh, we know this is Moore's team right now. Um, look, I think, you know, asking them to repeat as national champs. I think that's a little too much to ask, but with that, yeah, with that being said, you got the new and improved big 10, right? Oregon, mm-hmm. Washington, USC, UCLA. Um, I know you mentioned this going into this season after this season, they're going to have question marks at the quarterback position. So um, I'm a little concerned with their defense. I think they're going to give up some yards and points, but especially in secondary with that being said, I mean, that is a tall order to go and ask them to, um, uh, repeat as national champions. Yeah, I'm not going to call for Michigan to repeat. Now, can they make the now 12 team college football playoff? They absolutely can. I, I mean, I, I would say again, aside from Ohio State, and then you have to throw in Oregon again. You know, yeah. just trying to remember the new Big Ten now does feature Oregon. So 
Uh, Michigan, probably the third best team in the Big Ten right now. I know over at our on three preseason, you know, po- you know our post spring top twenty five at on three. We have Michigan at number seven, Oregon's number five, and Ohio State's number two behind Georgia. So still a top 10 team. I, I, I'm i confident in Sharon Moore and what he's going to do with the offense. He basically operated the offense Jim Harbaugh wanted him to operate over the past couple of years. And, you know, they led him to a national championship last year. The quarterback is the biggest question mark on that offense right now. You have Donovan Edwards back at running back. And I guess you're going to say it's Alex Orgy right now. I mean, that's going to be a battle to watch out for. Uh, going throughout the summer and into fall camp. But, you know, the defense, they still got guys back like Will Johnson, Kenneth Grant, Mason Graham. They're, all those, all three of those guys are probably going to be first-round picks when it's all said and done. They added UN, UNLV safety Ricky Johnson. He's a nice little transfer piece to that secondary, so they kind of plugged up a hole there a little bit. But I do agree, they're not going to be as good as last year. They're still going to be a very good team, very highly competitive team, and wouldn't really stun me if this team was at least nine or ten wins on the season and then you, you probably at ten and two. Regardless if they make a Big Ten championship game or not, you're probably going to see Michigan probably back in that college football playoff. You know, probably what Ohio State, Oregon, Michigan. If you're going to pick three teams from the Big Ten to get into the 12 team playoff, it's probably those three. Hour number two of Middays with Q on a Thursday edition. Rich Canyon is here, brought to you by our good friends over at Palladian Sports, 1450 Clements Road in Denver, New Jersey. And uh, Yuma, time to cut the cord and save some money. Nick Costco from On Three Sports, kind enough to join us. And then we got to mention uh, one team that I'm high on going into the season, and it could be smoke and mirrors, uh, obviously hitting to the Florida market with 1029 FM. Uh, the game, uh, Florida State, right? I mean, think about this 13 mm-hmm. 1, 2023. And then all of a sudden, in the sour note, you get shunned by CFP committee. Um, then you get crushed by Georgia in the orange. So it's like, I, you know, maybe they knew something we didn't. But all that being said, what's the expectation of FSU going into the season? Uh, it's got to be winning the ACC again. And I know they won it last year, third seed to know. And you're saying, oh, they were, they were definitely a playoff team that that year, right? The 14 playoff. No, I mean we all know the story. Sure, they got, you know, they they got. Uh, left out of the playoff because of their injuries, mostly to quarterback Jordan Travis. And, you know, it, it, that that was a big piece. And whether that's fair or not, you know, that's what happened. But with the 12-team playoff this year, and you know Florida State is going to be the preseason favorite in the ACC, you could say Clemson is going to be up there as well. But the ACC is probably a little bit weaker than it was last year. And it's pretty much this is Florida State's conference to lose I know Florida State has litigation. They want to get out of the ACC. As a, I feel like that's been a topic for more than just the past year or two at this point. Um, but you know, they, they got some good pieces back uh, from Mike Norvell. And again, they brought in DJ Uyangale, the transfer quarterback who's played at Clemson and Oregon State. Um, as long as he doesn't turn the ball over and remains a little bit more accurate like he was last year, correct me if I'm wrong, and I think Mike Norvell's coaching is going to help him in this graduate transfer year. So that'll help at the quarterback position to replace Jordan Travis. They brought in transfers like Marvin Jones, who plays on the edge. He comes over from Georgia. Earl Little, a nickel a nickelback from uh, Alabama, and Sean Murphy, uh, also from Alabama, one of their linebackers. So that defense is something to watch out for for Florida State. But it's got to be ACC title or bust. And again, if they do win the ACC, they'll be in the college football playoff. And at least they'll be in the playoff this year, Rich, as long as they win the conference. Uh, if they're, are they going to win a national championship? Uh, they're not on my short list, uh, but they, they are definitely a top 10 team for me going into 2024. But I would say still it's ACC or bust at minimum for the Seminoles. Yeah, I think you make the case the three biggest storylines last year, Harbaugh going out on top, winner national championship, right, with Michigan, Florida State getting stunned, um, I should say, shunned. And then uh, <laughs> the squad that you were extremely high on and we were high on started off 3-0, then one and a in conference play, 42 new transfers, the prime effect, Dion, year two in Boulder. They are right now, Nick, one of the most popular choices among the gambling public and sports bettors um, to hit their total to go over at five mm-hmm. and a half, right? So we saw last year a lot of money was on them. A lot of money was actually played and bet on them more than some NFL team. 63% of the bets and 71% of the bets uh, late in the season actually favored Colorado, believe it or not, mm. to exceed their win total. So five and a half, second year, Dion right now. And he, listen, I mean, it's going to be the story. They're going to be on national TV. We know that. We're, we're going yep. to see him a lot again. But that great start, right? And we were able to talk about the big win to start the season against TCU and then one and eight in conference play. Do they have enough horses right now with Dion's second year, the Dion effect, the prime effect to get to six, seven 
wins. I think they do, but it's it's a big if, though, right? Because you look at that offensive line, Shadur Sanders was sacked, what, 50-plus times last year. That was their biggest bugaboo. Yep. And because of that, they really couldn't run the football because the offensive line was very poor regardless. When you talk about pass protection and then opening up those holes for the run game, it just it didn't look like a balanced offense last year. And I'm not saying Sanders' stats were skewed last year, but he played really well under the circumstances. You know, he threw for – however many yards off the top of my head. And he, he was very impressive, really didn't turn the ball over, but he was hit a lot. And again, lot. they couldn't, and they could not run the football. Now they get a good running back in and Dallin Hayden transfer from Ohio state. He comes in and running back after losing Dylan Edwards. Sanders is back. Of course, Travis Hunter's back. You know, they have the means to be a bowl eligible team this year. You mentioned the national title, or not, not, sorry, the uh, national primetime spot, I should say, of what we're going to see on national TV. North Dakota State in August, on that August 29th, the Thursday night game, that's on ESPN, national TV. And usually when you schedule FCS opponents, you don't schedule North Dakota State, especially if you're a team like Colorado, which if you lose that game, then all bets are off as to the amount of criticism that Dion and Colorado are going to get. But they're going to they're be on NBC when they go to Nebraska for, the, for their second game, and they're going to be on CBS when they play their rival Colorado State. Now, can they come out of that stretch, the, the, the opening stretch at 3-0? and I think so. It's all on the offensive line. They replaced the entire starting offensive line with transfers once again. They got Jordan Seen, who was the number one tackle in the class of 2024. So the pieces are there, but that's the biggest what-if for Colorado. If that line, and I, I'm going to give Joel Clack credit for this, basically, and I, I agree with him on this, if you go from about 50 sacks to mid 20s, which is still a lot, that's that, still a great you know, job. It's that, that that is a great job compared to last year, and you might win an extra game or two that gets of you course. to that six win total. Now, I'm not with uh, my guy Joel Clack with uh, eight or more wins for Colorado right now, but could I see them going three and zero once again with North Dakota State, Nebraska, and Colorado State? Yes, and then Baylor. You really don't know. UCF is going to be a tough game, so maybe a four and one start. And then you get to the tough stretch, Kansas State, yep. Arizona, Cincinnati, Texas Tech a little bit, but then Utah. Utah and Kansas near the end of the year is going to be tough. And then, of course, Oklahoma State with the Big 12 schedule this year. Now they're back in that conference. So can I see a 4-1 start to give them some cushion like they had last year? Yes. I'm going to go yes, they're going to win six games this year. I still believe in what they can do, but it's all on that offensive line. I'm not saying seven or eight wins, but I think they will be bowl eligible by the time we get to uh, the end of November. Yeah, the, the the five and the juice. I mean, that scares you a little bit, right? Because, mm -hmm. you, you know, you can be sitting there at four and seven, four and eight, and you're just trying to squeeze out two more right. wins, right? And Clat, we know he's a Colorado guy. Again, Nick Costco joining us. Uh, follow him on X at Nick Costco. Uh, 59 College Sports on three sports. Are you wrestling? Of course, Cal Live Sports, kind enough to join us. Uh, Middays with Q. Rich Canyon is here. We are powered by Sports Radio 1029 FM, the game, Southwest Florida's newest game in town, and also Broad Street South. Uh, all the shows are up, encore presentation, on demand. And um, yeah, it's just, man, I'll tell you, they, they were such a lightning rod, right? Because mm. of Dion. And then all of a sudden, once they got humbled and they started losing, and then they had to deal with some injuries. And you mentioned the Hunter loss and then Sanders, kid running for his life. It kind of, the, the bloom was off the rose, so to speak. Um, right. I listen, there's still going to be a polarizing team because it's Dion and yep. 40 something odd transfers. Um, I'm just hard pressed right now to say to myself, I like them to win six, seven games. They want, they start off three, no, Last year, and then, you know, you were trying to cash those checks pretty early before they started I, to bounce, Hey, I was right? too. When you, go, when you go one and eight down the stretch, it's brutal. <laughs> I mean, if I had to pick it right now, game, you know, game to game, I could see him going three. You know, again, I think. I mean, I, I ultimately think they're going to beat North Dakota State and Colorado State, of course. Nebraska is a tough game because they're going to Lincoln, and that probably could be a much better team in year two under Matt Rule. And that that kid Dylan Rayola, true freshman quarterback, yep. he might be as good as advertised, and he might start right away. That team is going to get better under Matt Rule. I'm not I'm not calling for them to be in the top half of the Big Ten or, you know, or the top tier of the Big mm -hmm. Ten and make the 12 team playoff, but I think Matt Rule's got something cooking. He's a really good coach at the college level. But I could see them going three and zero Colorado, and then maybe maybe a four and zero start with the with a win over Baylor. That UCF game is going to be tough on the road. I'll, I'll call that a loss. I'll call the Kansas State game a loss. You're looking at four and two halfway through the year. So now, between Arizona, Cincinnati, Texas Tech, Utah, get Kansas, Oklahoma wins. State, get two more wins right there. Who do you beat? Maybe Texas Tech on the road and Cincinnati at home in the middle right there. 
Maybe you get maybe you catch Oklahoma State yep. at the end of the year because they're coming to Boulder. That back half of the schedule is pretty tough. So I would say in that first half, you need at least four wins to give yourself a chance. And then who knows, Rich, maybe you need to pick off a UCF or a Kansas State. And I don't see that happening right now, but I still think they're going to manage to somehow, some way get six wins. That offensive line will hold up with a whole new cast of characters. And I think they'll be a little bit better at protecting at protecting Shadur Sanders. And, you know, they'll, they'll go all out for this last year with Shadur, Travis Hunter, and uh, the likes. All right. And they will definitely be uh, dogs, obviously, in some of those games. And uh, you guys might be hearing the dog uh, bark as well as we uh, start to wrap it up. Um, that's that's what we do, right? We got dogs here. We got dogs there. We got dogs on Saturday in college football as well. Uh, <laughs> before I let you out of here, what do you got cooking over there with on three? Uh, just a lot of wrestling content right now. You know, a lot of uh, coaching hires being announced, you know, kids transferring, but you know, just getting a little summer updates from everybody. So you can go to my YouTube channel at Nick Costco 59 in associate, you know, it's it obviously it's in association with on three, catch all the content at on three.com as well. I just had a handful of people on this week. Uh, Joe Dubuque, Princeton head coach, uh, Clarissa Chun, the Iowa women's head coach, um, Kevin Ward, army head coach and Skylar Grode, who's on the, who's on team USA right now. Got a good conversation with her about women's wrestling and growing the sport uh, throughout the uh, throughout the past couple of years and in the future of the sport as well. Then uh, have uh, projected to have uh, Chris Bono, Wisconsin, Wisconsin head coach, and of course my guy Scott Goodale, Rutgers head coach, coming up soon as well. Well, listen, keep up the great coverage. We always look forward to it. appreciate you joining us. I know during college football and the NFL season, we're going to get you on a lot with middays with Q. But appreciate a couple of moments, my friend. Appreciate you, Rich.